your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness, for your long suffering, for your patience towards us, oh God. We thank you for all the many blessings you bestow upon us each and every day. Thank you, Father God, for all that you've done, all that you're doing right now, and all that you're getting ready to do in our lives. Lord, I pray for those that are listening today that they would have ears to hear, that they would have a heart to receive, a mind to understand what thus saith the Lord. Father God, I pray um, that this word that you've given me, that you would give me, that you would anoint these lips of clay, Lord, to speak your word with clarity, with the authority that you placed on the inside, Father God, with the boldness you've given me, oh God, with understanding and with compassion. I pray, Father God, for wisdom, for guidance, for your presence, oh God, today in the name of Jesus. And as always, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, oh God, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The life of a soldier. What I like to do today is talk, I'm going to talk about the life of a soldier, but I'm going to talk about the life of a soldier in our U.S. military and the life of a soldier in the in God's military, in God's army. I'm going to show, do a comparison. Some have heard me do this before. I'm going to do a comparison and show you the similarities that each of them have as a soldier, as a soldier, in as, as a soldier, serving in the army of the Lord, and as a soldier serving in the United States military. Amen. So I'm going to do a, a I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a comparison. So stay with me until we get to the end, and we'll bring it all together. But I want to talk about the life, the life of a soldier, the life of a soldier. Um, the first similarity comes with the recruitment. The similarity and the recruitment, as many of you who have served in the U.S. military, um, I know when I was in high school, you know, they have military officers all over the United States. And they're looking. The job of those who have served already is to go out and, and recruit. They have offices. They go on campuses. They, they go into uh, uh, every opportunity they have to reach out and to um, uh, uh, encourage those to come and join the military. They do so. All around the country, they have offices that are established, and the purpose of that office is to that area that they're in, the job of those who work for them, who have served in the military, is to go out into the highways, go out to the schools, go out to career fairs, wherever they can go, go even onto college campuses, and to recruit for the military. And so it is with churches. We have churches all around this country who are in neighborhoods or different areas of this country, even in the world. And the purpose, one of the purposes of the church is to those who have gotten saved, those who have received Christ, at some point they go out and they recruit. That's what we're supposed to do. We go out into the highways, the hedges, the byways, and we compel men, women, and children to come. We go out into the stores, into the neighborhoods, into and, and those that we have an opportunity, even on the college campuses and in, in the high schools, and, and we, we, we preach the gospel with the goal of drawing those individuals in to the kingdom of God. That's our job, to go out and recruit. We're recruiters. One of our, our titles, and that's not a gift, that's a given, is that we go out and recruit for God. Our, our life serves as a witness to the one that we that we serve, which is Jesus Christ. And understand this, just like the military right now, military has no mandatory draft. It's a choice you made after they've spoken with you. After recruiters have spoken with you and they've, and, and, and they've somewhat, somewhat done their spiel, then you have a choice as to whether you want to join. You, know, you see those signs that says, Uncle Sam wants you. So after they talk to you, you have a choice whether you're going to join or not. Now, when there's a, a forced draft, a military draft, you have no choice if you if you, if you reach certain uh, criteria. But when there's no draft, no mandatory draft, it's up to you. And so it is with the church. When we go out and we witness to individuals, it's up to you whether you decide to receive their call. It's up to you whether you decide whether you're going to serve God or not. It's called free will. And God's not going to force himself on you, but he uses us our lives, our words, to go out and minister to those who are out there who have not yet received him. 
So we talk, when you read the Gospels and Jesus Christ, one of the main things he did was, that's why it's important that you read all of them, because what he would do is he would teach. He would teach about God. He would give a lesson. And based on what someone heard, they chose whether they want to follow him or not. When people go to churches, they hear a message and they pray. The, the hope is that it touches their heart, which pulls them in. But the choice is still left up to the individual. God's not going to force you. He's going to, he says, through my love and kindness have I drawn you. He will try to draw you in, but he's not going to make you come in. It's your choice. Just like the military. You choose to go and serve. I know some parents are going, some parents might want to make the choice for you. <laughs> but you still you still have the, the, the choice. Now you have to understand also that once you sign on the dotted line with Uncle Sam, with the military, you belong to him. You have to submit to the military. They tell you when to get up. They tell you when to eat. They tell you everything you need to do is uh, you belong to them. You have no say in the matter anymore. When you when you say, yes, I want to serve in the military. Now you belong to the U.S. Army. They control your every move. They control you. You can't say, I am. I, you know, it's four o'clock in the morning. They say, get up, soldiers. You can't say, I don't want to get up. Well, you can say it. It might not serve you well. You might say it once, but you belong to them. Once you say yes to Jesus Christ, you belong to him. <laughs> it's not, no longer your will, but now it's his will. Matter of fact, he purchased you with his blood. He died for you on the cross. So when you say, yes, Lord, you belong to him. You're supposed to submit unto him. You're supposed to do what he tells us to do. You can't say, well, I don't want to do this. Well, let me, let me back up. You can. <laughs> it won't serve you well. You can't be hard-headed, stubborn, and do what you want to do. But in the end, you end up coming back to him saying, Daddy, I'm sorry. So why don't you listen on the first time? The hard head, the stiff neck, the stiff neckness of, of the children of Israel is what got them in trouble. And God says, I'm tired of y'all. I'm tired of you. But when you say yes to the Lord, it's no longer your will. Now it's his will. When you read the book of John, when all through, read the book of John, one of the, one of the gospels, the, the, the theme in that whole book, Jesus kept saying over and over again, I've come not to do my will, but to do the will of my father. I do nothing of my own initiative. Everything I do, I do what the father has told me to do. It's an example of what he's trying to tell us to do. No longer, is, no, not my will, but it's, Lord, whatever you would have me to do, I'm led by the Spirit of God. So now you belong to God. You belong to Uncle Sam. You're supposed to do what they tell you to do. You belong to them. Now that you join, now that you're a part of these teams, what's next? So when my soldiers already said, I know what's next, brother. So those who have served already might be serving right now. It's time for boot camp. I've heard the story. I've never served in the military, but I've heard the stories of boot camp. Boot camp in the military ain't no joke. Sometimes you have to take it more than once. The and, 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 and there's a purpose for it. Right here in, 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 in 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4, when it says here uh, in verse 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him. One of the things about boot camp is, is to prepare you, to give you that warfare mentality, to prepare you for what's getting ready to come. And they have to separate you. That's why when, 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 you, when, you, when you go and, and you join the military, they got to take you off somewhere. You can't go and get trained and then go home that day because they understand, they know that everything they put in you, it will be washed away when you go home. So they have to separate you. And so it is with, the, with those who serve, uh, uh, serve God. We have somewhat, and, and, and wait a minute, let me back up. The purpose of the, of the boot camp, the purpose of the boot camp, the purpose of the boot camp, um, just to bring back some memories for some folks who have been through it. Uh, they, 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 they put you in a boot camp for a reason. Um, and it's, it's to toughen you up. It's to get you ready. Um, it's to prepare you for what lies ahead. Uh, and so, but also as a Christian, when you get saved, God says, I need to separate you. I need to separate you from the light. I've called you out of darkness into this marvelous, marvelous light. To I got to separate you. Second Corinthians 6 and 7, 17 says, 
Second Corinthians 6 and 17 says, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. This is a reference to believers being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Believers being unequally, un unequally yoked with non-believers. He says, how, why, how does light have fellowship with darkness? How can the saved have fellowship? Now, I'm not talking about now. Understand, I'm not talking about why you just cast all your friends aside. I'm talking about fellowship. That's different with me checking on my friends and me fellowshipping with my friends. And those of us in the church understand what fellowshipping is. Because when we start fellowshipping, sometimes we don't want to go home. But he's saying, I've got to separate you. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, As such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified. But, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit. He says, you were washed. I cleaned you up and then I sanctified. I sanctified. What does sanctification mean? In the Greek is hagi, hagi, azo, hagi azo, which means to separate from profane things and dedicate to God. It means to separate from profane. Sanctification, I got to set you apart. Separate from profane things and dedicate to God. Consecrate things to God. It also means to purify, to cleanse et externally, to purify internally by renewing the soul. So I got to set you apart to do all these things. I can't have you hanging out with those that you that I delivered you from because it's going to mess up what I'm trying to do. And so it is with the military, the U.S. military. I can't have you continue to hang out with your friends. I've got to separate you because i got to make you into a soldier. i got to turn you into what I need to turn you into. And I can't do that if you're still hanging out with what you hung out with. Once again, it doesn't mean casting them aside. But for a period of time, i got to separate you. I got to get you to where I can deal with you and work with you. For I am the potter and you're the clay, says the Lord. And I got to mold you into what I'm trying to mold you into. But if I let you still hang out with them fools, you're going to still be a fool. You're going to still be a drug head. You're going to still do the things you used to do. I got to separate you to get you where I need to get you to. So it's a separation. The separation. Separation. Soldiers are sent away. That's what it sent away to boot camp. When we're not at war, soldiers spend most of their time in boot camp preparing for war. When there is no war, they're preparing for war. Hold on to that. When there is no war, they're preparing for war. That's where we as Christians get into a lot of trouble because we, when there is no battle, when there is no trials and tribulations, we're not preparing for the next one that's coming. It's when there is no war that you prepare because it's hard to prepare for a war in the midst of a war. It's hard to prepare for to, 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 to prepare for a battle to be able to fight against the enemy when you're in the midst of the fight because you're just thinking about survival. You're not thinking about how I'm going to fight. You're thinking about survival. It's when there is no war, when there is no battle, that you prepare for the battle. So when the battle comes, you're ready. From the time a soldier enters the service, Constant attention is paid to physical fitness. Physical training, or PT they call it, is the foundation for preparing soldiers for the stresses likely to be encountered in battle. Physical training includes running, group exercises, and sports and other physical fitness events to build up your muscles, to get you ready for the battle. The same is true when you become a member of the, of the body of Christ. You must go through some type of basic training. You must go through some, but, but, but for a Christian, it's not called PT, it's called SC, it's called spiritual training. I got to get you ready in some spiritual training. This is the foundation for preparing Christian soldiers for the attacks of the enemy that are coming. Some churches have what's called new members or new beginners classes, where you're taught the foundations of what it means to serve God, the basics of Christianity. You have a lot, and because, and, 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 and understand. And this, and when you when you are bathed in Christ, when you first come in and you're going through your what, what we consider spiritual boot camp, you have a lot of internal battles, especially in the mind where it all starts, because you're fighting off temptations you didn't have before you got saved. Ah, now that you're saved, you're fighting off temptations that you didn't have when you weren't saved. What do you mean by that, Pastor? See, when I wasn't saved, I didn't have the Spirit of God telling me don't do things. I did whatever I wanted to. Because I wasn't saved. I, 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 I did all the wrong because I didn't have anything, you know, no, nothing internally telling me, brother, you shouldn't be doing that. Sister, you shouldn't be going there. I, don't do that. I, don't say that. 
Now that you're saved, the Spirit of God, now you have a war internally. Because the flesh is saying, I want to go party. The flesh is I want to do the things I want to do. But the Spirit is saying, no, I need you to stand here so I can mold you into the soldier I'm trying to make you into. So there's an internal battle in the mind. I want to go back to what I used to. That's what Brother Paul said in chapter Romans chapter 7. The things that I should do are the very things that I don't do. That which I should be doing, I don't do. I don't understand what's going on. This battle in my mind. Because the flesh says, I want to do what I used to do. The spirit says, no, brother, I'm here to save you from yourself. So there's a battle. And this is, this is more prevalent when you first get saved. Because you're coming out of the world. And the world is still close to you. So you have more battles. The longer you're in Christ, the easier you get. Some of those battles don't leave. Come on, some of y'all still want to go to the club. Some of y'all still are tempted by the things. But it gets easier. You understand. Now you understand how to fight. So when you first have those, fight, those battles, you don't understand what's going on. Well, I, I, why am I feeling this way? What am I going through? I'm having some struggles here, and I don't understand how to fight. But as you learn these things, the basics of Christianity, the basics of, 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 of the values of, of being a, a, a Christian soldier. Then when you get in, when you come to the understanding of it, now even though you struggle, you understand it better, you understand how to fight it. But boot camp, the spiritual boot camp, is where you develop endurance and build up your spiritual muscles for the battles that are coming. Can I give you so somewhat of, of a picture of, of what I'm talking about? Don't read it now, but we have time. Go to Exodus. Um, and read um, all the way from Exodus 1 to 50, uh, Exodus chapter 1 to Exodus, Exodus 15, and you'll see the journey of the children of Israel. Now, and we, we know the story. The children of Israel were in Egypt. They were bound. They were slaves. Um, and, and they cried out for the Lord, to, to, Lord to, to deliver them. And when he sent Brother Moses, who was 80 years old, to deliver them from Pharaoh, he says, I'm taking you from here to the land that flows with milk and honey. So I'm delivering you from what, you're, what you've been going through. But I'm taking you to the land that flows with milk and honey. But along the way, they had to make a pit stop called the wilderness. Some of us don't like the wilderness. The children of Israel had a problem with the wilderness. But the wilderness was their boot camp. See, I can't take you to the land that flows with milk and honey. I got to get some stuff out of you so you don't mess it up when you get there. Some of y'all aren't ready for the land that flows with milk and honey. He says, I got you in the wilderness for a reason. I got you in boot camp right now. I got you. But all they did was murmur and complain. Oh, come you bring us out here. How come we can't go back to Egypt? You brought us out here to die. We could have died in Egypt. God said, you keep complaining, I'm going to let you die right here. But the wilderness, the wilderness experience, we don't like it. Why? Because we've been delivered from something that we were used to. We, we, we have, we've been delivered from something, but we haven't got yet to where we're going. We're in the middle, and we don't like the middle. Why? Because that's unfamiliar territory. I don't know what to do out here in the wilderness. At least back there, I knew what to expect. It was hell, but I knew what to expect over there. I'm in the wilderness, and I don't like it. It's boot camp, y'all. Allow him to do what he needs to do, but stay in the wilderness. Separate yourself from everybody else and stay in the wilderness. That's what he's making you. That's what he's molding you. That's what he's getting some things out of you. So when you get there, when you get to where God is taking you, everything that you've been through is preparation for where you're going. So when you get there, you look back and say, now I understand a little better by and by. Well, I have to go through all that mess. Now that I've made it to the land that flows with milk and honey, I understand the wilderness a little better. But you need the wilderness. Tell your neighbor, you need the wilderness. You need the boot camp. He said, I got to build you up. For where I'm taking you. And understand this. When, 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 when you read um, uh, Exodus 3, 17 through 20, I'm just going to tell you what it is. Exodus 3, 17, 17, 17 through 20, you'll see that God protects us in the wilderness. Because God was taking them. When he took them from Pharaoh, he said, I'm taking you the long way. They saw where they were going. He said, I'm taking you. He, it was a roundabout way. He said, I'm taking you the long way. And sometimes we don't want to go the long way. Lord, why, am I, why is it taking so long? He says, what you don't understand, my son, my daughter, is if I had let you go the shortcut way, the Philistines were right there. That army was right there. They would have taken you out. You ain't ready for that fight yet. You ain't ready for the big league yet. I got to get you ready for the big league. If I let you go that way, they would have wiped you out. 
and what I had in mind for you, you would have never gotten that. I know what's best for you, my son, my daughter. The life of a soldier is letting somebody build you up into a soldier. But you got to get this. Some of y'all want to just jump to fighting and you ain't ready for that yet. God says, I'm building up your spiritual muscles. Now, as I move along, you, you join, you've gone through boot camp. Now it's time for your specialized training. After boot camp, many U.S. soldiers trained in their military occupational specialty. They train in the military occupational specialty. All soldiers, officers, and enlisted are assigned to one of 21 branches according to the functions they will perform in combat or in support of combat units. The main combat units are infantry, armor, field, artillery, aviation, and engineers. So you train. After boot camp, they put you in one of these areas is to train you. That's your specialty. That's what you've been called to do. Mm-hmm. That's what you've been called to do in the church. Ephesians 4, 11 through 12 says, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's why he gave those that fivefold ministry. The, fivefold, the purpose of the fivefold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's what it, 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 it kind of kind of uh, 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 compares to what the military. Now that I've been trained, God said, I got to place you somewhere. What is your spiritual occupational specialty? What is your spiritual occupational specialty? In other words, what's your spiritual gift? Simply said, what is your gift? When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, read it. I'm giving y'all some homework. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It talks about the gifts. Romans chapter 3. In Romans chapter 12, the first um, 10 verses talks about your, your spiritual gifts. What is your gift? After you've gone through some classes, a lot of churches have said when you go through certain classes, now we have to find out. And through prayer, God said, I'm going to help you discover what your gift is so I can train you in that area. You got to get trained in, the, in what your gift is, whatever your specialty is. That's what God says. I got to train you in that area to get you ready for battle because you're going to fight in that area. Whatever your specialty, you have the gift of administration, the gift of, of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpretation, the gift of teaching, the gift of preaching, the gift of whatever of exhortation, the gift, whatever your gift is. Romans 12 says, do it. But before you do it, you got to get trained in it. One of the purposes of the church, and we got to get better at this, is training, helping to train our soldiers in the area of specialty. Not so much figuring it out. God says through prayer, you can figure out what your gift is. But once you discover what it is, we got to get you trained in the area because that's your area of specialty. That's what you're going to be used in the battle. We all come together with our gifts and we fight against that enemy. But what is your specialty? That's what you got to focus on. What is my specialty? What is my spiritual occupational specialty in the army of God? We must understand all of this is necessary in order to be a part of God's army. God wants to develop a soldier's mentality in all of us. A soldier's mentality. When you have a soldier's mentality, you must expect to fight. You say, I got to build up. There are a few things more needed in the church right now than a genuine warfare mentality. God said, I need somebody that I need some soldiers. Are there any soldiers out there with a warfare mentality? I'm not saying going to cause a war, but get ready to fight because there's a war on the horizon, y'all. And we better get ready. We better get ready. We better get ready. Get ready. T.J. Jake said, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's coming. God is looking for a few good men and a few good women to take the challenge in developing that warfare mentality. Are there any soldiers in the house today? Because I just need a few to start. If I started with 12 and we see the results, I just need some, a few good dedicated warfare mentality soldiers to get this fight ready. Now, 
They're weapons that we use in military. The weapons has, our military has weapons. Praise God for weapons. If you don't have weapons, you're going to lose the fight every time. Part of your training is learning how to use the weapons. Because you can have a weapon, but you don't know how to use it, you're going to be still be in trouble. We got to learn how to use our weapons and use them properly. The military has weapons like, they got some serious weapons, y'all. They got semi-automatic weapons, sniper weapons, machine guns, automatic long-range snipers, medium machine guns. Just in there. They got missiles. They got weapons of mass destruction. Just wipe some things out. In the church, we have weapons. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. For 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says, we have a different set of weapons. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not, we do not war according to the flesh. See, our U.S. military, they fight according to the flesh. <laughs> they got some, some physical weapons. But verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, don't miss that, mighty in God, not just mighty, mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So we have a different set of weapons that we use. And understand this, we must learn how to use those weapons and use them properly. Because see, our weapons that we are learning to use are not to fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We're not training to use our weapons to take each other out. We got too much spiritual friendly fire going on in the church. Our weapons no, were not used, we're not, we're not developed to take out our brothers and sisters. It's against the enemy, not flesh and blood, against the enemy, and it's a spiritual warfare. We got too many people who've been destroyed but what's called friendly fire in the church. Our weapons, we gotta learn how to use them, y'all. Gotta learn how to use our weapons. What are our, what are our weapons? We have, we have uh, uh, the word of God is one of our weapons. Prayer, fasting, praise, obedience. We gotta learn how to use those. One of the things I, I was thinking about, y'all, when I was growing up, um, I'll be the first to admit as a little kid, not having a big brother. I had a big sister, but a big sister Cheryl, she was my protector. She would fight at the drop of a dime. And I watched it. And I would fight at the drop. I didn't know how. <laughs> it wasn't that I was afraid. Because I remember I was thinking back. I was like, I fought some dudes that were, that were a lot older than me. And I remember one dude was laughing at me, trying to get me to stop. Brother, will you stop? I wasn't afraid of nobody, which could be a problem. I got my butt whooped as a kid. I ain't going to lie. So it wasn't that I was afraid to fight. I just didn't know how. Some of y'all got to learn how to fight, y'all, because once I learned how to fight, then nobody want to fight me no more. <laughs> but I had to learn how. I had to learn how to fight. When once I learned how, I wasn't afraid. It's like, come on, somebody mess with me now, and you know nobody wants to mess with me. Not that I thought I was bad. That's still what I'm trying to say. But I wasn't afraid to fight. I, I, I got tired of getting my butt whooped. Are you tired of losing fights? Because some of y'all running in a battle, but you're running in a battle wrong because you don't know how to fight right. You're losing the battles. You ain't afraid, but you're losing battles. You got to learn how to fight. Learn how to use your weapons correctly. Because you can have a weapon and damage yourself if you don't use it the right way. Come on, y'all. So we have weapons. We got to learn how to use the word of God. We got to learn how to use prayer. We got to learn how to use when and how to fast. We got to learn the power of praise. There's power in praise. You got to learn how to use that against the enemy. The enemy cannot stand praise. That's why he don't want you praising God. Praise and worship is a powerful tool. We got to learn how to use it. And then one of the most powerful tools is the spirit of obedience. You got to, you can learn, you can know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If you never obey it, it does you no good. So we have all these weapons. We got to learn how to use the weapons. We even have weapons of mass destruction, y'all. You know, I know that because Leviticus 26 and 8 says that five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. 
You know, we got weapons of mass destruction because we got some folks standing behind me. Some of y'all that have big brothers and sisters, some of y'all weren't afraid because, you know, if I, if I got in trouble, I had big brother and big sister to come and deal me out. We got somebody called God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit said, you know what? We got your back. If things get too hot, we got your back. Don't you worry about the enemy because when the enemy comes in like a flood, I'll lift up a standard. God says, I'll put on the army of God and I'll go take the enemy out. Don't you worry. Daddy's got your back. Daddy's got your back. Don't you worry about the enemy. When it gets too bad, too much for you, we'll swoop right on in and take over. So we ain't got to worry about the enemy. Now that you have that soldier's mentality, that soldier's attitude, you've been built up. You've learned. You've gone through boot camp. Ah, You've gone and you 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 uh, you 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 worked on your gift. You you uh, improved your gift. You you exercise your gift. Ah, you got yourself ready. Now it's time for active duty. You've gone through the steps to get here. See, in the military, they get them ready. Then when there's a war going on, then they say well, it's time for active duty. God's looking for those who are ready for active duty, which means serving the Lord faithfully daily. And our own duty 24 7. See, y'all might say, well, that's too much. No, when you're a Christian, you got to be on duty 24 7. You got to be alert. That's why it says be sober minded. It ain't talking about alcohol. It's about, talking about being sober minded, being alert to what's going on around you, being alert at all times. I know it may get hard. You got jobs, you got kids, you got spouses, you got all this stuff. But God says, your job is to be alert at all times because I got, I'm going to have to send you an active duty at any moment. He's not looking for reserve duty. You're not looking for reserve status, serving only when called upon twice a year. No, 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 no. He's not looking for guard status, which means backing up the active duty group. He's not looking for those who are AWOL, absent without the Lord. He's like, I got to send you on some active duty. I need you to be active in this fight. I need you to be somebody I can send at a moment. So I need somebody that's ready for battle, who has a warfare mentality, because this is spiritual warfare ain't no joke. But you got to know how to use the weapons that God has given us the right way. Because if you don't, you'll harm yourself. As I get ready to close, I want to bring all this together, y'all. I want to bring all this together as I get ready to close. I head to the finish line. Um, turn to Second, First Samuel 17. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to summarize this chapter. First Samuel 17. I'll give you a backdrop uh, on what this thing is talking about. Um, it's a story, covers the story of David and Goliath. When I, when I, as I was preparing this, I thought about Brother David, the life of a, he has a life of a soldier. And I, I just want to, I just want to summarize this, this, this 17th chapter of First Samuel uh, for a second time and just hit on a few of the key verses. Once again, we have here um, uh, Second Samuel, I said, no, I said First Samuel, didn't I? First Samuel 17, we have a, a the story, once again, of uh, David. Oh, we know David. You know, uh, when they came to anoint uh, the next king, David was anointed as a teenager. Y'all understand that. Don't miss that. And so we often wonder why what happened to David when he got to Bathsheba. Well, this is a man after God's own heart. No, he was. At this point, he got away from who he was by the time he got to Bathsheba. But God chose him because he was a man after God's own heart as a young man. And so here, they thought it was his older brother, Eliab. And I said, no, Jesse said, no, no, no there's somebody else here. Um, uh, Samuel said, there's somebody else here. Somebody else here. And it was David. But he was out tending. And he was about his father's business. He was about his father's business. What they didn't realize is David was going through his own boot camp, and he didn't realize. He was out there taking care of his father's business, tending the sheep. Spiritually speaking, he was doing what God told him to do. He was about his father's business. And so what happened was, we know the story, Goliath comes on the scene. And his brothers are sent to active duty. This military, it's Philip the Philistine, uh, 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 Goliath the Philistine going against the, the children of Israel, so to speak, God's people. And so what happened was, Goliath started punking everybody. He starts coming at himself, who's going to fight me? Well, understand this. David had gone through boot camp. 
through going out, taking care of the sheep, getting himself ready, doing some things to get himself prepared. He wasn't worried about and He wasn't getting entangled in, in what was going on in, in, in his daily life. He was about, I got to be about my father's business. When you're about your father's business, he will get you ready for active duty. And so God says, I know somebody that can fight this giant. Because there's some giants that everybody else is scared of, but there's some folks who says, I'll fight them, bring them on. But once again, you got to know how to fight. You got to know how to do it right. And so God says, wait a minute, I got to get David on the battlefield. God says, I'm trying to get you on the battlefield. Just that's where obedience comes in. You might understand why you're doing some things, but just follow what God is trying to tell you. So God says, uh, David's father, you know what? I need you to send David out there to take some food to his brothers. Had nothing to do with the food, y'all. God will use things to get you when he's trying to get you to for a purpose. Just do what he tells you to do. So he gets David out on the battlefield. And of course, since he's a baby of the bunch, his brother's got a problem. What you doing here? Why you come out here with us? And David said, why are you messing with me, man? I'm just doing what my daddy told me to do. And so while he's there, all of a sudden, Goliath comes up and he says, and he starts talking trash to, um, uh, 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 to, um, the children of Israel. Thank you. So talking trash to him. And all of a sudden, David, who's a fighter, who has that warfare mentality, says, hold up. Hold up. Who is this man, this uncircumcised Philistine, talking about the army of my God? Did you catch that? Who is this uncircumcised? Who is this man putting down the army of my God? Ah, you, you don't know who you messing with. And so here, we have here, um, David asked a question in, in verse 26. I'm going to drop down to verse 26. It says, then in verse 26, and David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is an uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who is this uncircumcised? What shall be done for the man who takes him out? And so we go, uh, as we read on, as we drop down, um, I like the conversation that happened between David and Saul. Um, we drop down to verse 33. Uh, it says here in verse 33, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. David, you're a young man. This man has been fighting since he was your age. You can't handle this, which tells me, y'all, there's some young folks out there that we need to go out and recruit, y'all. There's some young folks who got some heart because some of us older folks have gotten scared and we let the devil punk us. There's some young folks that say, wait a minute, huh, who gonna come who gonna defy the armies of my God? I'll fight this Goliath. I'll fight this giant. I ain't afraid of him. It's time for us to go recruit some young folks to fight this battle. Ah, they, Saul said, brother, brother, I, I don't think you can handle him. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock. They said, let me testify for a minute. Let me tell you what I've been through. Let me tell you about the boot camp I've been through. When I was out there taking care of my daddy's sheep, a bear and a lion came and tried to take them out. But I took care of both of them. I'm not afraid. If I can deal with them, this uncircumcised Philistine ain't nothing for me because I've been through boot camp to prepare me for such a time as this. I ain't afraid. He says, I went out after and struck it and delivered the lamb from out of his mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine would be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. In other words, son, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Y'all pray for this boy. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see him again. He want to fight? Go ahead and fight. The Lord be with you. See, he, didn't, he might look at the size of David. But he couldn't see the heart of David. He didn't see the mentality of David. There's some folks in the church right now who have this kind of mentality that's been overlooked. But God says, I see your heart. I see that mentality you have. Don't worry about the folks that are overlooking you. When it's time, when your time comes, 
I'm going to call you for active duty. I'm going to have you go fight the Goliath that everybody is afraid of because I know what's in your heart. I know what's in your mind, and I know I can count on you. So it says here, as I get ready to close, so Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put on a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Mm. There's a lot that can be said about that. See, he was trying to fight with somebody else's armor. You trying to fight with the world's armor. David said, I have not tested this. So you got to understand, when you get on the battlefield, don't forget how you were trained. Some of y'all forgetting what God told you to do when you get on in front of the enemy. Some of y'all, when you get on the battlefield, don't forget your training, what you learned in person and in, 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 in basic training. Don't forget all what. Look back and look where God brought you from sometime. And look how I, if he fought this way in that battle, I got to remember how I was trained to fight. I got to know how to use the weapons that God has given me. And this ain't one of them. I got to take this off. This is the world's armor. I got our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down the strongholds and pulling down giants just like the Goliath. Then David, in verse 40, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and he put them in his shepherd's bag and in, in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. I like this conversation, y'all. That's how, see, they always accuse me of a trash, being a trash talker. This is Trash talker extraordinaire right here, y'all. It says, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give you I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Some serious trash talking going on here. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin, the worldly weapons. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. I come to you in the name of the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. This day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God in Israel. He said, David started testifying. I'm going to tell you what my God, you know why he said that? Because he had the confidence. He said, if God can deliver me from a lion and a bear, he remembered what God had delivered him from. Sometimes you got to do that. If he can deliver me from them, God, he said, God will deliver me from you. That's why he can talk with that confidence. It was all about the training that he had in the boot camp to get him mentally prepared for this. Because if David had never been through a fight with a lion and a bear, he would probably have been afraid of Goliath. There's some lions and some bears that you fought with. There's some, 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 what I mean by that, there's some serious battles that you've had where you thought you was going to die. There's some things that you've been through. The purpose was all things work together for good. To those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Everything you go through is for a purpose. It's to get you ready for the Goliath that's coming in your life. For the battles that are down the road. And David was able to fight this battle and win. Because of what he had been trained in. And he did not forget the training that he had been given when he got on the battlefield. Don't forget what God has told you and what God has trained you in. When you get on the battlefield with the enemy. Boot camp is to prepare you. Learning what your gift is is to prepare you. Developing that warfare mentality is to prepare, you, to, to prepare you. Knowing how to use the weapons correctly, knowing what they are, knowing that we even have them, is what you have to learn in order to fight in a fight like this. And so we know the end of the story. David took out the Goliath. Because he understood that the battle is not mine anyway. The battle belongs to the Lord. And since it belongs to him, I got to fight the way he wants me to fight. And as I close, I want you to understand that right now, during this pandemic, 
One of the things they do in the military, something called mark time. Ah, where the soldiers just marching. They ain't moving, but they're marching. They're stepping, but they ain't moving forward yet. Why? One of the purposes of marking time is God is saying, the military says, I got to make sure all the, all the soldiers align or step together before we move forward. I got to make sure all y'all are stepping in rhythm. God says, during this pandemic, my goal was to get you to mark time. So I get you guys in rhythm, stepping in the right direction. He said, I got you marking time right now. Some of y'all want to move. He said, it ain't time yet. Just mark time. Just, I, I, got you, I got you moving. I got you doing something. I don't want you just sitting there. I need you to mark time. Just, to, just be in step with me. I need you to get in step with, with me, says the Lord. See, you, you're, you're three steps ahead of me. I need you to back up. Mark, mark time right now. Ah, you're almost there. You're almost in, in a straight line. He said, when you're marking time, you're waiting on the commander in chief or the commander to say, move forward. It ain't time yet. Some of y'all want to move right now. God said, it ain't time. That's why Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is so important for us to live. He says, trust the Lord with your whole heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. Right now, just need to mark time. Let me direct you. Just mark time. And, and I, but Lord, there's a battle over there. No, 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 no. I got that. Just mark time right now. I need you to be a step. You're almost in step with me. You're almost, almost there. He said, I need you to mark time right now. Ah, there's going to come a time. So we have to we have to make sure that, you know, we have what's called a commander in chief who gives the word on whether there's going to be a war now or, or whether you're going to go to war. Ah, we have a commander in chief called Jesus Christ who said, I need you to mark time right now. You may want to go into the battle, but I'm trying to get you ready. Just mark time. Ah, when everybody gets lined up, there's going to come a day when God's going to give those words. After all y'all, he said, the churches, I'm trying to get you lined up. I'm trying to get you in line. Let's step together. We all are all over the place. We are a hot mess right now. I'm trying to get y'all lined up. I'm trying to get you in, in tune with each other. He said, I need you to mark time. Ah, but one day, when we all get on the same page, when we all get in the same book, on the same page, he said, I'm going to give you those words that some of y'all have been waiting for. He said, when I realize that everybody's lined together, when I feel like you're in a straight line, everything, I'm going to give you the words. And I'm one day, God's going to come and say, I need you all to forward march into battle. That's when you're going to go in and take out the enemy. But right now, i got to mark in time during this pandemic to get you ready for the war that's coming down the road. i got to mark in time. The life of a soldier. The life of a soldier in the U.S. military. You agree to join. You go through boot camp. You go through your specialized training. You learn how to use the weapons they will have you use. They prepare you for active duty. They send you out on the battlefield. So it is with the church. You made a choice to give your life to Christ as a soldier in the army of the Lord. You've gone through some boot camps. You might be going through a boot camp again right now. Because you may have walked away. Now you've come back. You gotta retrain those muscles. You've gone through boot camp. You've gone through your specialized training, spiritual training. And understanding what your gift is and how to use it. You've learned the weapons of our warfare. Prayer. The word of God. Fasting. Praise. Obedience. God is saying, I've sent you. I'm ready to send you. I've sent you. Out. Some of you have, have gone out on some missions. You've had some active duty missions. You've been out on a battlefield. Understand this, there's a battlefield, there's a, there's a fight going on 24-7. Whether you're in it or not, there's one out there, there's one going on internally. There's always a battle going on. The battle to do right. The life of a soldier. The life of a soldier.
God is saying I need to develop some warfare mentalities. I'm not talking about gang style. I'm not talking about going in, kicking down doors. So those who will be able to stand. When the armies of God are defiled, the armies of the living God are defiled by the enemy. Who's ready to fight? The church is in a battle right now. It's not time for us to shrink back, but to move forward. But let's make sure we're fighting right. Let's make sure we're fighting the right battles. Let's make sure we know how to use the weapons that God has given us, not on each other. During war, we see a soldier that's wounded. Our job is to go and rescue them. Not to put our foot on their neck and keep them down. But to love them back to health. To wrap your arms around them. To go to them with compassion. To love. Our weapons are never meant to fight against ourselves. Or against flesh and blood. But against the enemy. The life of a soldier never ends. In Christianity. There's a fight going on at all times. And God says, I want you to always be ready for active duty. So I need to be able to send you out somewhere when someone has a need. Send you out on the battlefield. I need you to be ready for active duty at all times. If you're not ready, get ready and stay ready. Because your time is coming. Those of you who may feel like, well, Lord, I'm not being used. Hold on. God sees you. He knows your heart. You have the heart of a David. We're ready to fight. And God says, I'm going to send you. It's part of David's mission. That was part of even a part of him learning. David had to go through that. On his way to being a king. Every eye closed, every head bowed. The life of a soldier. The life of a soldier. The life of a soldier. Glory, hallelujah. For everyone has said yes to the Lord. Your yes meant a lot. You may not have understood everything that it meant, but when you said yes, you said yes to your will, Lord. Yes, make me, mold me into who you're trying to make me into. And God says, I need you to surrender all. I'm trying to mold you. I need you to separate yourself. I need you to get alone. So I can help develop that warfare mentality, that soldier's mentality in your mind. You have to have a soldier's mentality. That's the goal of the U.S. military. Why wouldn't it be the same for God? You have to have a soldier's mentality. To be able to stand in the face of adversity. To be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. The fiery darts that he shoots every day. You gotta be able to stand with what the devil's gonna bring. We have a weapon of mass destruction called prayer. The power of prayer can take out and hold on. The power of prayer. We gotta use those weapons. Use the word of God. Use prayer. Use praise to fight the enemy. Don't use your flesh. You'll lose every time. It's a spiritual warfare. You can't fight this with fleshly desires. It's spiritual. And you must fight it as such. But God says, I got to develop that mentality in you. You have to allow me to develop that mentality. I'm trying to make you into a soldier. You might be a general one day. You might be a lieutenant in the army of God. I got to develop those things. Time out for all the games. Time out for all the mess. Around the distractions of this world. 
to get in the way of what God is trying to do in our lives. What has God called you to do? What is your specialty in his, in his army? Are you working on that? Are you perfecting that? Are you ready for active duty or are you still on reserve? Are you AWOL, absent without the Lord? Who is God talking to today? You may have walked away from God. You may have unenlisted yourself from his army. But understand this, once you join God's army, you're always a part. You might be AWOL, but you are still a part of his army. He says, I'll receive you back. And the great thing with God is when he receives you back, there are no repercussions. You won't get in trouble. God says, I will love you. I'll kill the fatted calf. I'll celebrate your return. There's joy when you return back to the army of the Lord. He won't harm you. He won't condemn you. He said, I'll love you back. Matter of fact, we've been waiting for your return so that you can strengthen your brother. Who is God talking to today? Who is God talking to? There might be someone today who has not yet received God, who has not yet become a part of his army. You may have served in the U.S. military army, so you understand what it means about submission, about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone today, is there anyone listening through Facebook Live, through YouTube Live, who wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as your commander in chief? He says, my arms are open wide. I stand at the door knocking. Will you let me in? It's your choice. It's your choice. I will make you. I won't force you. I'm going to love you in spite of it. But it's your choice. Choose ye this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This house and this house. This house, we're going to serve the Lord. You decide you want to serve Jesus Christ. Just repeat after me. If you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, simply say, Lord, I am a sinner. And I ask that you would forgive me for all of my sins. Cleanse me, God, from all the wrong I've done. Forgive me, O oh God. Help me to turn from the life I used to live. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I want to receive you in my heart. I want to join the army of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who are listening today, you may have walked away. God's a God of reconciliation. He says, I'm a God who believes in reconciling. She said, I never stop loving you and I never will. I love you unconditionally. You did nothing to deserve my love. You, do, you can do nothing to stop me from loving you. I love you unconditionally. There are no conditions tied to the love I have for you. So the fact that you walked away didn't stop me from loving you. If you want to return to the Lord today, God is saying, I'm here to receive you once again into my arms. Repeat after me, Lord, please forgive me for turning my back on you. Forgive me for walking away. I received you into my heart. I served you for a time, but I walked away. But today I'm ready to return. And I pray that you will receive me once again into your loving arms. Thank you for loving me the way you have. Thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for never turning your back on me. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to pray for those that are listening. Whatever your needs may be, I pray that, Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts and minds of those that are listening today, Lord. Develop that warfare mentality, that soldier's mentality in all of us, Lord, as we prepare for what's coming ahead, Lord. That we may finish strong. That we may be able, that we may, you may be able to develop some toughness in us. That we, that we won't shrink back from the enemy. That we won't be afraid. For you're not given, you have not given us a spirit of fear. That of love and the power and a sound mind to stand in the face of adversity. I pray for those who are sick in their bodies, Lord, that you would bring healing to them right now. Those who are hurting, those who are in need of comfort right now, Lord, I pray that you would hold them right now in the name of Jesus. Bring a spirit of peace in their hearts and their minds, oh God, to those that are listening. Those who are in need of deliverance, oh God. Open that door of deliverance. So you see, you will always make a way of escape, Lord. Give them the strength to take that way of escape. To get away from the situation they're in. Release them from what they're bound by, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Whatever it may be, oh God. Take the taste of drugs out of their mouth. The taste of alcohol. The taste, oh God, of fornication. The taste, Father God, of, of adultery, oh God. The, the taste of lying, Lord. Whatever it may be. Take the taste of sin out of their mouth, out of their heart. Let there not be their desires anymore, oh God. In the name of Jesus, break the chains that are binding them right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, break the chains that are binding us. We thank you and we praise you. We stand on your word and your promises, oh God. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let everybody say thank God. Amen. Soldiers in the army of the Lord, the life of a soldier. I pray that you use, uh, once again, uh, we honor um, our soldiers, um, those um, who served in the military have gone on to be with the Lord, those who have passed away. Um, once again, those who are still alive, honor them, thank them for their time. Um, I pray that your week is blessed, and I pray that you enjoy the rest of this weekend, um, uh, and that... Uh, this will be a blessed week. This will be a week if you started to develop that warfare mentality. Thank you for all that have listened in. Once again, we pray that you will support us um, in going to uh, our YouTube live, our uh, YouTube page, Faith Worship Center Fresno. Faith Worship Center Fresno. Um, and and um, uh, subscribe to our page. If you like what you heard today, send us some, some notes. Uh, uh, share this message today. Um, uh, and just... Uh, uh, continue. I pray that you continue to support us. Uh, those who want to support us financially, you know all the ways that you can do that. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. Let your day be blessed. Enjoy your barbecue, whatever you're going to do this weekend. Enjoy time with family. Um, and remember to keep us in prayer as we get closer to going back uh, face to face. I uh, pray, pray that we all be led by God. Uh, Father God, we thank you. We praise you. Uh, continue to be with us throughout this week. Dismiss us from this place, but never from thy presence. Bring us back at the appointed time with the praise in our heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to close with this. Uh, I want to ask my wife. Once again, thank my wife and my son today for helping. My wife who's behind the, 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 the scene of working the cameras. My son who opened us up today on service. And my wife knows what I'm getting ready to say. Much prayer. Much prayer. Much prayer. Much prayer. Much power. Much power. Some prayer, some prayer, some power, some power, little prayer, little prayer, little power, little power, no prayer, no prayer, no power, no power. Be blessed. My family.